What's going on, YouTube? Earth Power here with CVVH. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> and we're back yeah. with the top eight of season three's bracket tournament. We are finally uh, actually aiming towards the finish line. Uh, all of top 16 has been seeded. We have five Civ versus Lightwater Alzonius, and we are going to be hopping into that match today if the title and description didn't give it away. Yeah, let's hop in right now, as a matter of fact, because it might be Absolutely. a long one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Strap in. Look at the timestamp and get ready. Yep. Um, but yeah, no, I'm piloting a uh, five Civ control. I wanted to to get behind it. I felt like uh you know, looking at it on paper, this this seems like the deck that for some reason shouldn't be here, if you know what I mean. Like, I know what you mean. Five fitting five colors into forty cards and maintaining consistency is a stretch i guess for lack of a better way of saying it i know we've said it in some of the other matches but the deck just continues to perform you know sometimes you just draw all the right things on time and uh yeah really hoping to uh to do that again against what of what is probably one of the more consistent decks in this tournament in alzonius oh ghost so, touch that's pretty nice yeah early ghost touch takes you off of your three drop hulkus so that's a good early snipe if I ever saw one. Yeah, it's really strong and in a matchup like to... this because you're taking me off of bait sometimes, taking me off of Valzonia sometimes. Yeah, uh, you have the other Hulkus, which is a good response, and uh, I just continue to have answers for any of your aggression, which looks like that's the game plan right now. You know, I can't afford to not to give you turns where you can start mounting momentum, I guess. Um, yeah. Also, we're just going to apologize get... for this right now. The glare. We're in a new place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the glare from here on out is uh, going to be going to be fun. So um, you did it. You you got to Alzonius, albeit you don't have a hand and it's your only card on board. So basically, Great. I now have to just outpace an Alzonius over the course of the next two to three turns. Um, and Sky Sword is the way you do that. Yep, Sky Sword definitely helps. Uh, another one would help even more, um, because as it stands, I am still presenting lethal, but Emeril is very fragile, so even though you probably can't deal yeah. with Halzonius, there's a lot of ways you can get rid of that dinky little 1,000 power Emeril here. Yeah. Uh, a blocker, blocker and removal here is basically worst-case scenario for you. There's a lot of things that can answer, and it looks like my hand has Baza. To <laughs> you don't have a hand. It's true. Um, so I have Baza for the turn following. Um, I could, uh, I mean, just uh, I need to go back and look at the whole hand. I saw Baza and Blizzard. Those are the two cards that stood out. Bronze Arm Tribe and a few other things that don't really do anything. Yeah, foul to get back. Crimson Hammer is probably going to be the play here. Um, I take the two shields. Yeah, I take the two shields, but Baza deals with Alzonius. Unfortunately, if you play another creature, though, I might just lose. So, um, right. So, I'm thinking here that <laughs> I could just swing and put you on a two turn clock. Sometimes Baza, you know, the whole win before you lose idea. Um, Unfortunately, though, if I hit Surfer, I, I don't think... Is this deck playing Kalan? I don't... I yes, think it it's is. playing two Kalans. Yeah. Yeah, two Kalans, three Surfers. So, you know, there there are potential outs, but you don't have a creature. So this worked out for, for old Carl. Um, yeah, Soul Swap into Sky Sword. Now I'm just... Uh, I think now I'm just stabilizing. So. so even if I had had a creature there, though, the Soul Swap would have kept you in the game another turn, probably. For sure. So lucky, uh, lucky shield there uh, sets me up with another shield, some extra mana, and uh, yeah, this turn is just going to be the play Baza. I'm trying to decide if playing mana here is correct, uh, depending on what my next potential turns could look like, as far as wanting to be able to quote unquote have my cake and eat it too. Yeah. Meltdown in hand uh, basically opens up a lane for me to swing for game um, if things ever do get dire again. Um, and yeah, yeah, 
on my side of the board, it's looking it's looking dire already. You know, the fact that you have Vizagazil, you did have to trade it away, which is nice. But of course, if you see like, I think there's a Morbid Medicine. Oh, Morbid Medicine's in mana. So actually, Vizagazil might not be a problem anymore. But still, on my side of the board, I'm just like not confident in my ability to stick creatures long enough to break the last shield and win. Um, yeah. If you're debating attacking uh, there, I like not doing that. But yeah. Surfer, yeah. no effect because they're all pretty good coming to play effects. Yeah, I mean, some you could have argued just surfering back the loco, but it doesn't make sense to give me a card that could potentially take you off of an Alzonius if you yeah, don't yeah. take it. The problem is I definitely want to hold Alzonius if I draw it, or maybe something like Holy Awe being held to deal with blockers and I don't want to give you a, a free discard. Yeah, absolutely. So I think now we're in the me thinky long time turns. Um, oh no! Where I basically just try to decide how long I want to I want to dirtle for. Um, Holy all is a constant out for you if you're able to maintain creatures. Um, if I break all of your shields and hit a trigger creature, that could just be the game. Um, so two turnings, not really an option. I have to look kind of at the alpha strike potential. Um, Gonna see if I can figure out what shield is down. For both some casual cheating. Yeah. yeah, well, tapping mana correctly just to leave all the colors untapped. I don't think it matters necessarily. Yeah, because it's grabbing soul soft anyway. Well, maybe. But... Cheating again? Just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. There's like sometimes, yeah. like, you know, fun fun questions on whether or not you can take stuff back in like IDC. So it's like, <laughs> it's funny that you like just... redid the mana and redid the thing you picked. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. We're just live, lively slapping cards on the board, yeah. and again, you know, it's it cheating or taking things back. We're we're playing these decks in in the way that pilots them the best. I think what a lot of people don't hear, obviously, since we're narrating over all of these, is like our, some of our discourse back and forth, where you and I pretty much talk out like a lot of the turns that are in like oh yeah that have like bigger decisions that have multiple lines where like. You and I, you, you, obviously, you being on the other side of five civ are just talking about potential outs, and me on that side is just kind of arguing one out versus another, depending on what the grabs are. But like, you and I talk out a lot of these, uh, a lot of these turns. You know, the goal is to feature the decks, not necessarily. While you and I are both obviously playing to win, that's the whole point. But um, at the end of the day, you want the deck to perform well. And the last thing I want to do is nitpick the plays and make the match worse for a game that's, you know, been out of production for 17 years. It doesn't really make sense as a good use of time. Um, right. Speaking of good uses of time, soul swapping out Medius is a pretty good one because I probably can't answer it. Oh, just kidding. Hey, that looks familiar. Anytime. I'm... Oh, hey. Another trade. So, all right. All right. Yeah. So that works out. Um, Sky Sword. As long as I don't multi brick, I can set up another shield to deal with uh, unicorn fish and still play Bali. So that's uh, that's just nice. It's just a nice thing. And five is, there are a lot to, of uh, multi sieve in your deck, though. Like a lot of multi sieves, yeah. like yeah, eight or nine or something. Say. Is it? Is it really eight or nine? I feel like it. Three, it's four, at least seven. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, it sure is nine. For mana fixing, but not really. <laughs> what can I say? The deck is immaculately constructed. <laughs> yeah, no problems. No, we, I think of all the decks that we put time into this season, um, this was the one that probably took the most amount of just forward thinking <laughs> of just what are we, what are we doing here? What are we trying to accomplish? And is this deck actually going to function and be any sort of pseudo consistent? Yep. Yeah, I'm just, I'm yeah, just happy I convinced you, you almost, to put it in the play-in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, unicorn fish swings on the shield there. You almost didn't do that, but I think that's just uh, uh, kind of uh, yeah. uh, in lieu of a similar vein. I, I, I feel it where you feel like you're on the losing side already, so you just kind of give up on the match. But Did I really not. almost not? I mean, I don't. I don't know what I'm you holding. You drew your card. You drew your card and threw your hand in front. It was like, like it looked like a pass, and I was like, and I pointed at the unicorn fish, and then you were okay. And you swung with it. What am I holding? I'm not drawing great. I mean, the unicorn fish draw was pretty good, but the ones before and yeah. after that, uh, I don't know. Could could be the Alzonius. Could be a holy all. Those seem like the only two cards in your deck that you wouldn't play if you could. Yep, because they are the unplayable ones, unfortunately. Um, and Alzonius isn't even that good to hold because I don't have the mana to play a Belix with it. 
But here we go. That's a pretty cool uh, miraculous yeah, snare is, play. It is an out yeah, it is an out zone, yes. And this turn, you're pretty much good to go. I mean, you can actually just break the last shield, because even if you double break and then hit Holy Awe, you can never lose. Like, I can't even top deck bait and play Alzonius to speed attack, so you can actually go for lethal this turn, and it's 100% correct. There's no punish, because you can't get Surfer and Holy Awe in one shield that you're breaking. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And Surfer, Surfer, Colon, Spiral Gate don't deal with three total creatures, so... yeah. So you're good. This is actually lethal. You don't have to actually play any cards here. <laughs> We're I mean, gonna you, watch. You, you we should do it though. Anyways. You you should actually play cards just in case I have Holy All Ash Shield. I mean, I won't win the game, but it's good to just play some stuff on the board, um, just to be safe. You're being very safe. <laughs> uh, you probably pass here because there's no reason to. And every other time you you attack too aggressively, and this time you're going to let me have another turn for no reason. <laughs> ah. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, because Holy Awe there, like, wouldn't actually do anything, so it's basically like a Bulmedius break, right? Because I, I wouldn't oh, be able to now, play it. Yeah. Well, now you're going to make me do it anyways. Yeah, yeah. That's so funny. Yeah, top, the, top the spiral. Yeah. Granted, I wouldn't have told you that in the moment because, like, we were probably tired and I was tired of losing and I was, like, a truly or two in or something. So I'm just letting things happen. <laughs> oh my god, you're passing again. Holy Jesus. <laughs> I sure did. <laughs> There it is. All That's right, we got there. Physically painful to watch. Yeah, that was a that was a tough uh <laughs> tough last two turns there. Sorry about that, guys. They don't Even mind. when I'm winning, I'm doing it poorly. <laughs> it's not about win or lose, it's about making sure uh you bad manner your opponents. That's what everyone knows. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Make them feel. Make them make them lose in on the field and in their hearts. You guys should bring forty oh, card yeah. uh five civ control to IDC. Maybe that's what I should do. Do it. It's a fun list. It literally plays everything. <laughs> There's <laughs> not a card, card you couldn't play. Part of, one of the memes I want to do eventually is bring a 100 card deck because that's an upper limit. So like I want to... Is, is 100 really? The, yeah, the it's the upper limit, limit for their format. I kind of want to do it. Really? I might construct one. with like just It's like a control deck with a lot of redundancies. Yeah. For energy stream, for uh, brain serum, for but uh, there's like one plus side to playing hundred cards in IDC is that shuffling is just a control S instead of having to deal with a hundred <laughs> in your hand. <laughs> you don't have to physically hold the deck. Yeah, yeah. It's just a it's just a button click away. Anyway, game two. Here, I was gonna say this kid's getting this kid's getting cocky with his IDC points out here. Yeah, I'm good. I can just um. Uh, Go one and five as long as I make that one person really upset. We're good. <laughs> yeah. So um, back on the the consistency talk for Lightwater Alzonius, right? So like five Civ on paper shouldn't win this matchup, and that hand does not look uh, not look great. I'm missing. You have a bronze the, arm. It's great. The, I know, but I'm missing the nature mana for bronze arm. So You'll get fingers it. Crossed, we we'll get there. Yeah, we hope, hope so. A um, couple of multi Civs that could get us there. Um, but with half of our nature card being multi, that's interesting. Um, Baza, Baza down immediately. Next turn, soul swap lets me get the card right. No, I know, soul I know what soul swap does. Have to go down and mana, so <laughs> I just say I'm, it may be a multi first because like meltdowns in your hand, and I don't know. I don't know. I mean, maybe that's a good keep too. It's tough. Yeah, um, meltdown could just be the answer if I get to to losing here. So, if I looks get to like losing. my only uh potential. If I get to losing, <laughs> um, uh, part of me, yeah. So we're we're back on that. Do I play the holy all and play the Belix down? Yeah, no, have... no, 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 never. Wait, well, I don't I think. think it's about to, I think it's about to happen. I look confused yeah. on camera. Yeah, because yeah, you're 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 giving me the exact reaction you're having in the booth right now. Yeah, uh, I just I I don't like to speak in absolutes, but I just feel like this is probably a never never a good thing to do. But I did find the nature man of the next turn. So either way, I'm still in the same position turn wise. Yeah, so, now you can play a bronze arm tribe that didn't actually advance the game. Right. But it puts me back on pace, right? Yeah. I'm just a 
turn. I'm just a turn late. But either way, you're, you're right. I think I think 90 percent of the time it's incorrect. Um, this time it just happened to work out. So uh, I still feel like you're I don't know, like you could have always played the Beelix this turn if you really had needed to. Like after the Magris, because I'm not just attacking with Emerald right. like a madman. But you might. And especially you missed your three, which was great. Yeah. So, you know, that that I couldn't have banked on. And had you not missed your three, you probably would have started swinging because I don't think that there's a reason not to with. But how bad is that for you, really? Kind of bad. Like, I want to I want to be able to position myself over the course of the next two or three turns to have at least a few creatures on board to capitalize off this meltdown if that's what this is going to come down to and if i get too behind too quickly i'm just behind the eight ball so. okay true I, I will counter that with if you play Belix, you are one turn away from meltdown compared to normal so you could just like try to draw green mana play bronze arm loco let all your shields get broken and then meltdown for victory if that's the game plan i just don't know that i would ever i i don't know that i'm ever scared enough to play Belix with a spell and mana on turn two against rush or aggro maybe against rush if i have like Literally no other hope, and my hand is all sixes. <laughs> that would be. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm losing though for sure. You want to know what deals with Alzonius? <laughs> Apparently that one. Yeah, I was like, Bazagazil is the biggest thing you got. Only thing that deals with it. That's not right at all. Yeah, unfortunately, it was only at a uh, thirteen thousand power. I think because I didn't have blue mana, and I'm just gonna go ahead and play this Crystal Memory now, and uh, still not have blue mana so I'm gonna figure out what i'm what i'm about to be up to excuse yeah. the buffering this is a long video and we sped it up by a lot oh did it do it again yeah, yeah i think it cut the quality too there for a second no mine's good i think that might be, yeah mine's uh... good it, it just when it when it buffered it, it kind of blurred out there for a second just picking right. dog hair off of things yeah that hair it happens you might have seen atari uh, Carl's Corgi in the top right corner of the screen a little bit ago. He was there. Yeah, he likes hey, to hang out and, appearance. Yeah. Hang out with Christian for a little while. Oh, buh. I'm deep in the tank with this crystal memory play here. I think I'm trying to figure out what my shields are. Oh, yeah. This is a hard deck to do that with because all the one ofs and two ofs. Yeah. Give him a minute. Um,. Yeah, I mean, you also have to plan out the next few turns here, because the only way you ever really permanently deal with Alzonius here is to either swap out Baza or, you know, spend a whole turn replaying Elixia. And, you know, those aren't always super easy things to do. The The Soul Swap Baza play could happen this turn, which feels yeah. like it could be quite good on exactly this turn. Because even if you don't have anything yeah. else to do, Unicorn Fish is not a, a huge threat by itself. Yeah, and even if I know what both the shields are, it's a 50-50 to know which one I'm getting. So it's uh, you know, this crystal memory has to be decisive, I guess, for lack of a better way of saying it. Yeah, you mean the other one that was getting broken there? Yeah. Right. Because the way, There's obviously, also... the way double breaking works is you see the first shield. If it's a shield trigger, you can play it, and then after that happens, you uh, get the other one. See if I show everybody what I got. Should be soul swap. Fingers crossed. Yeah, it's soul swap. All right. Yeah, we, we like got that. Soul swap. Yeah. We do like soul swap. It all so worked out. I, I actually, questioned the mana decision, and yeah. it just all worked out. I'm kind of upset here because if I had blue mana, I could uh, hide and seek back the unicorn fish, but unfortunately, I don't. So I'm not going to be able to play Soul Swap and Hide and Seek. So looks like I have a few answers in my hand, though. But Boz is definitely about to hit board, and then I think I'm just trying to find a way to maybe not lose this last shield now. Um, that would be ideal. Hide and Seek. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like guess, yeah, yeah. Mana. The option is if, if Soul Swap's going to be my only play this turn, I might as well get the blue mana charge now if I end up needing it next turn, which, you know, in most frames of thought makes sense. Um, 
hide and seek also can't deal with evolutions as we uh as we learned from a few uh few games ago so. yeah hide and seek's fine but get the blue mana you have other better removal in your hand like apocalypse vice as long as i can't yeah. play another alzonius which i can't um i guess besides petrova too apocalypse vice is looking like it can answer anything absolutely so emerald whatever so. i guess i i bluffed earlier and i got it back <laughs> <laughs> yeah, looks like Syrian's back out. <laughs> well, none of these cards yeah. are Petrova, so it looks like Apocalypse is a full clear. Yeah, yeah, we didn't talk about that, but that Loco earlier sniped Petrova out of your hand, and then uh, it could have been a uh, game breaking. Yeah, true. Just if I would much rather have a Petrova than um a Syrian and Emerald on this board, because Petrova can only be answered by Bazogzeal, which is gone, or uh, Blizzard of Spears, which is just a one of. Yeah, and then so Blizzard of Spears couldn't deal with that 5,000 power unicorn fish if that That's happens. true. So. <laughs> I absolutely would have called fish in a heartbeat. <laughs> the, the one time that may have actually happened. Speaking of Atari, there he is, running back and forth. All right. And Petrova calling unicorn fish was um just going to be lethal. <laughs> Unless yeah. unicorn fish broke a shield that killed itself and then Blizzard deals with Petrova by itself. Then it's then there's a chance. Yeah, that time when I have to tear pit your... Uh... Unicorn fish and then Blizzard, the singular Petrovian. Oh. So, well, what do you got? Uh, I think it's uh, just a mana decision here. Of course, we should also comment that you do have Meltdown in your hand, but you are probably yeah. not going to, as long as you have anything else to do, there's no sense to rely on that when I clearly, yeah. more than likely, put a shield trigger down with Emerald and there's just a bunch in the deck that you don't want to hit. Yeah. We yeah we crossed that bridge uh, back in the foul match. Um, I think it was the foul, either foul or rub, whichever one it was. Where I ended up not yeah it was foul versus water dark. Where I ended up not meltdowning. This and, is interesting. Uh, yeah yeah. Talk about this play for a second. We can get back to the meltdown idea. But yeah, um, dealing with the two creatures here. Send one back, you destroy one, you're gonna have to discard one, so you still end up you're gonna end up with three cards in hand and three mana. So um you take back the emerald, which makes sense. You wanna be able to hopefully combine that with another two drop if you see it. Uh and I can take you off of Okay, so I give you one Alzonius. Interesting. Yeah, I'm wondering yeah, that part of me thinks I probably should have just given you the spiral gate, but I guess wanting to stick a creature makes more sense if that's the case. Giving you like pseudo removal when I do have blocker outs is probably not correct. But uh, probably just in case you have to eventually rely on like a thrash or something. Yeah. Oh yeah, Meltdown just went into mana. Yeah, uh, sure did. Wow. It's bold. You got a lot of cards in your hand. Are they all better than Meltdown? Uh, we're about to find out. <laughs> um, yeah, I wonder. Yeah, so back to the meltdown thought because I think I'm gonna spend a, a good minute on this turn too. Um, yeah, yeah, right. Like if you have answers to board, if you can basically make it to where you're not dead on board, I think not meltdowning and taking the percentage of them having a trigger, especially if it's just one that's an out. Like, when your deck runs, especially when the decks run cards like Surfer, Holy All, Kalan, like, creature-based removal, um, it never uh, it never makes sense to to melt down in those odds when you have a clear board clear, and the, the odds of winning go up significantly if you make it through the next turn. So, you know, I just... I, I think that's where that turn comes from again. You know, play lets me have a full board clear. There's no way you can drop an Evo. Granted, with the Water Dark deck, you know, the odds of you having the liquid person and spin slicer in two cards with the additional blue mana was yeah. also unlikely and you just happened to hit the home run so but still there are definitely some times where it might not be good this turn but you could have held it and potentially if you had two or three creatures in a few turns maybe a sky sword comes down not right. maybe not a sky sword but you know what i mean like any, any other creature like bronze arm loco then all of a sudden right. it's a lot safer and maybe it's worth trying if you're running out of other removal options right emerald again yeah. Is that really the only creature you have? I think I might be debating the effects, yeah. Yeah, uh, okay. Just to see if you can find <laughs> another. Okay, yeah, there they all go. Well, now so Meltdown's we looking there's... pretty rough. Yeah. 
Is that another Alzonius and Shields? It's a Bendy boy. We need to start. No, we don't. We don't need to double sleeve these. It it might have been nice if they were all just double sleeve to start with, but it's too late. You and I do the thing where we just we pick a side and go down. It doesn't matter like what's there. You and I aren't trying to. That was the it's, most it's annoying as thing. Random as random needs to be. Yeah. Like when when, when you were in like tournaments, they they looked at the the foil ones. You know, they literally looked. Yeah. And you could tell they were doing it, and they like gave you that little snide look. They're like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I can't help it. The cardstock is garbage. It's humid. We yeah. live in Virginia. It's a swamp. <laughs> what do you want me to do? It's a swamp state. <laughs> yeah. Those were the worst yeah, people. Just... So, yeah, guys, uh, let that be a, a note as we uh, continue to trudge through this match. Don't be the worst people. <laughs> Um, be, is this still your be turn? Be swamp people, like you and me. Wait, I have a card. Uh, yeah, no, it's now. still my turn. Yeah, no, we, we, uh, you've been playing with your mana. Commentary was sure have been. I have just, uh, you've got all five colors. Just, yeah, this turn better be weird. complicated. You're just gonna eventually <laughs> apoc and pass and want to be furious. Well, if it's any consolation, I think I've got like eight cards in my hand, seven cards in my hand. So, all right, we're finally gonna play mana. Let's see what that one's gonna be. Oh, it's a clamp. Clamp. Makes sense. Not very safe against a bingo deck. Ooh. We're gonna rebirth the emerald. Spicy. Get back the Belix. Spicy. We could V Charger that. We could hide and seek that. Hide and seek is We're more definitely risky. We're not gonna hide and seek it. Yeah, because then we just end up in the same bingo trap. Yep. So yeah, so yeah, if Volcano Charger clears, um, Guarantees it that you won't have an answer this turn. At least it can deal with blocker and swing. So we are just trying to make it towards the end game. Which a we are. A very slow play at a time. Yeah, we are kind of in the end game. At least it certainly yeah. feels like it from the perspective of the Alzonius player, which was me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Stabilization continues to be annoying, though. I just, I, I think I keep being a mana off of being able to find like that perfect kind of turn where I can stabilize and clear board in the same turn. So I keep having to clear the creature and wait. Tar's I mean, getting all the good pets right now. <laughs> you are pretty stable. It's just a matter of like, Nagris is a little annoying. I could play two creatures next turn. If that happens, it's hard to deal with sometimes, but it's it's looking pretty stable for you. Yeah. The the issue is is that I just can't leave it, right? Like if I leave Magris unchecked, half of your deck answers singular blocker. So Yeah. Definitely can't do that. And I, I say half of your deck. The unicorn fish has been used. We've gone through two spiral gates. It's Koan, oh, holy. Yeah, this is great. Yeah. Oh, you put an Elixia in mana later. Um, I think this is something like a Thrash, yeah. What is Thrash getting back? Is he just getting back the Elixir that you just put down? Just to not go with, like might, a net negative on I mana? Might, I think I might end up getting back the Meltdown. Forbos. Yeah, I'm getting Forbos. Yeah, I guess Elixir isn't grind. very good here, so. Yeah, we're going to grind this out even longer. All right. And my draw is a Hulkus, which is not bad if I have another card. I do not. Even though you have three blockers, like if I can stick two creatures and follow it up with a Holy Awe, two creatures is harder to deal with than one. Um, you do still have that Apocalypse Vice in your back pocket for whenever I do eventually play more than one thing in a turn. Yeah. Part of me wishing I had the clamp now, but here we are. Then double bingo. <laughs> Vins the brick. <laughs> Oh my god! Well, I mean, you've got to be holding on to. I I want to think it's you, you have to have a holy doll at this point. We haven't seen one yet. Oh jeez. Yeah, we're playing the. Let's see if we can just get him not the top deck of creature. Um, turn. I think Bloom would have been nice. Bloom is a way to win the game via attacking. Because like, if you can clear my board, holy odd does nothing. But uh, still. I mean, okay, so Surfer, I guess, is annoying, but you'd have to hit an awful lot of Surfers for that to be relevant. 
Yeah, and as we learned with the uh, Bloom well, play, if you hit Surfer first, it discred it basically takes away the second break that could potentially be the Holy All. Or essentially, Bloom's not on the board to let me use that Holy All anymore. So true weird game think, mechanics. Yeah. I actually forgot what Claude said in that comment, but I'm gonna take your word for it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess if back, you don't want to do that if you hit a surfer and then I have Holy on hand. Yeah, Bloom isn't yeah. super safe. Yeah, yeah, he got back uh, Spiral Gate. Um, so Spiral Gate and the only card I can assume that's Holy All in uh, in your hand. So I think this turn, I'm trying to figure out if it's going to be APOC or if I'm just going to be able to cycle anything else into this turn if I do it. Um, APOC sounds great to me. Yeah. Sounds like a pretty just, safe APOC. Easy one to call for sure. And yep. you have a foul yeah, too, are. so yeah. You have a foul in your yeah. hand. If I play one creature this turn, you still can't like waste your entire turn playing foul. You have to have removal too, otherwise Holy Hawk could get you. Are we gonna Stream. get that? I thought oh we were goodness. about to get to the yeah, I thought we were about to get the two drop bingle. Wow, no play. Interesting. No creature whatsoever. So this is the turn where we lost soul? That would be a juicy lost soul. Then four bingles. <laughs> you play two. I know. So uh actually is it, is it two? Change. It might even just be one. It's two. Okay. You have the lists. Yeah, I'm looking at it. Yeah, two bingles is a lot. I think like I think people have decided it's a bad card now. I think that sort of came back around. I heard people talking about it. It's like bingles yeah. kind of just like not worth it. Canisil just basically does the defensive thing better, and uh, what just oh, gives wait. you another another three drop that you can play with gladiators i mean yeah if you play either of them you might just play the good ones Felix and syrian and call it a day yeah that's fair yeah. oh goodness this is uh it's a grind this is, this is tough yeah no i i am uh I, I am deep in it. This is at 1.5 speed by the way guys i think this match's run time was originally 58 minutes so Ever wonder why Carl used to uh, usually plays the aggressive decks, and I usually play the control decks? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Gotta, gotta think my way through it. The funniest thing, if you go back to like the last five turns in this match, you've tapped your mana differently like every single turn. One time you tapped it the other direction. I don't know if you caught that. It happened. <laughs> no. It went the <laughs> other way for a whole turn. I, yeah, I'm a psychopath. Man. <laughs> and now it's in a straight line. <laughs> Which it, yeah. like, never is with you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so funny. There it goes. So now, we, yeah, we're, we're diversifying a little bit. <laughs> spread them out a little yeah. bit. Keep the other... Spread. Keep that grouping together. Yeah. Uh, looks like we're tapping the four mana. I don't think I tapped, actually. I don't think I have a play if I do grab anything. You played the foul and then the memory, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because if I did tap for memory, it would just be the blue, the two natures, and a singular light. I would have, yeah. So regardless, I just have. Ooh. I would have blue. Tari's chewing yeah, something. Blue in the top light right. nature and dark. Yeah. Look at Tari uh, chewing the ground. Uh no, he's got his uh, uh, little cookie. He's got a cookie toy. Yeah. Nice. Munch. Seen in one of the earlier, earlier, minute of this match. He sure is just giving that toy whatever he's giving. That's way more interesting than what's going on on this board right now. I'll tell you what. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what. <laughs> hey, you finally found a double Hulkus into a, into a Belix. I did. Kind of fresh. You ready to kill them all? You ready to do that? I'd love to. Ooh, I counted I my deck there, and I would really love to know what that number was. Don't have any uh, timestamps or markers to let us know. So uh, yeah, you and I are just as lost as we were probably during this match. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 mana configuration really uh really frustrates me. Well, that takes me back. That's how I used I, to tap when I first started. What am I doing? Why why don't you like that? You don't like the vertical? 
Not in like groups of three like that. I don't know. It's... Okay, I don't mind it so much. I I just I just crave consistency. That's what's getting me. This is a play. That's a yep. play that says I'm gonna mill you. Yeah, it looks like it as I begin to search my deck somewhere. Yep. What am I grabbing? Oh, I have to show you this time. Um <laughs> That's true. Let's see. What if the camera caught you grabbing a creature with this? And you just didn't show me and I didn't. <laughs> I what think do you my have, options... have to replay this? <laughs> Probably. Um, I think my options were either that soul swap or uh, lost soul there. So. Yep, yep. Soul swap and lost soul are both quite juicy. Um, you kind of know what's in my... You kind of can guess what's in my hand based on like the turns that I have and head plays and now I have four in my hand. Um... But if you're just comfortable clearing that blizzard, like you got rid of some blockers, you got to be a little careful here, but I imagine you know what you have to do to keep things clear. And again, I don't know what the number of cards in my deck is, but it's got to be like sub 10 at this point. We've been here yeah. for a while. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've got seven. Oh, what did I have? I, I don't know. I wasn't counting here, so I was hoping you were. I was not. I've got we less than seven. Otherwise, you'd be panicking right now. Might still be panicking. Who well, knows? like if you had seven, if you had less, less than seven, there's no way you'd ever win, because you can't get through this many shields with a Forbos. So we'd be good to go, and you wouldn't well, be doing still, this. I'm still sky sorting. Yeah, here we are. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Baza pretty much is the nail in the coffin. Oh, I see what I'm trying to accomplish, maybe. But I, I still don't have Meltdown in my hand. Oh, that's funny. But no, nah, I think you're just trying to mill me. But yeah, Meltdown into Baza is great. It's like Meltdown Pyro, except way less efficient. But I'm pretty sure you're just going to mill me. Might have had more than seven cards in my deck. I just can't count. Yeah, I have four, five... Yeah, I'm a, yeah, yeah. If we're tied on cards, I lose because I drill draw before you draw again. You just can't play another Sky Sword or Bronze Arm or something. And guess what? You don't have to make me play that Sky Sword again. Soul Swap. Yeah. <laughs> the strats we were discussing. Now I want to do that deck. What do I do, Carl? Oh yeah, so now I oh, just geez. grind you out of the game. <laughs> I just yeah. demoralized. <laughs> That was a really satisfying yeah. drop. They went everywhere. <laughs> it sure did. Spread right over the deck and everything. Yeah. I'm gonna call a judge. I was trying to add more cards back to my deck. <laughs> You're gonna go grab a card that you put down earlier. It's Bingle. All right, yeah. we found it. We found the Bingle. It was the non-bendy one. For those of you counting at home, Sky Sword's going down because that would be um suicidal play. Shields. Baza on the you're debating which one to put in shields and which one to kill, which is pretty funny. You made you made me do that. That I I don't know if I did. That doesn't you, make any... you held it back up. You were like, okay, are you okay. sure? I don't know. I think I think it might have been you, but okay, I stall for time against Bull Medius to confirm that you will in fact have to mill me. <laughs> yeah. There and it that is. is uh... You draw yourself out of it, and that's the game. Wow. Oh my goodness. Wow, we got there. We so, certainly did. That was a match. That was a match. Five Civ Control, man. Upsetting uh, upsetting the whole bracket. Made it through the play-in. Beat Waterfire Nature Tempo. And beat what I what I could have only assumed would have just been a bad matchup in Whitewater Alzonius. And yet, somehow manages to pull it off even after playing a, a Belix on turn two. And yeah. Getting a Holy All that's, back in my hand. That's funny. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I forgot that even happened. It was so long ago. <laughs> It was a uh, while ago. If any of you, like, because I know you always ask, like, who you think is going to win in the comments and stuff. If any of you actually predicted uh, five Civ to win this match, no, you didn't. Stop lying. There's no way. Yeah. There's no way you did. Yeah. The poll <laughs> of like, like, guess your top four, knowing the top eight. Uh, it, <laughs> I'd venture to say at the point of recording this that percent predicted that five civ was going to be in this top eight so. yeah it's a totally unhinged prediction it doesn't make any sense practically or you know theoretically it's just yeah, yeah. doesn't the doesn't gotta be at like a plus yeah it's gotta be at like a plus 
plus one thousand. Like, but like, give me, give me hundred to one odds, and I'll take five sip. Yeah. When you think about it, though, like the odds are, are much higher than we give them credit for. Because like, is it just strictly gonna be a harder time than if you were playing traditional Forbos? Maybe. But Probably like, yeah. you know, they, uh, let's see what is for most not usually have it as water, but like sometimes water gets you there. Sometimes water gets you a miraculous snare. I don't know. Like, who knows? It's not that much worse. It just yeah, gets mana screwed much upsets. more. Yeah, yeah. But I was going to say, speaking of upsets, uh, get ready for your next top eight match between Dark Fire Nature Mikey's Pliers versus Light Water Dark Hydra Hurricane. Yeah, uh, we'll see if um, if if the old. I guess, and again, we've talked about this before, Light Water Dark Hydra Hurricane, probably one of the top five decks in Duel Masters as it stands, um, versus the, the dark horse of this tournament, if ever there was one in literal dark fire nature Mikey's Pliers. So it'll be interesting to see uh, who comes out of that one. But stay tuned. It'll be mm -hmm. coming at you here in a couple of days. And uh, guys, until then, peach. Peach.